Hi friends, I'm Paul Gibbs. And I'm Nate Miller. And this is the second in our series of basic recording. And this time we're going to be talking about microphone, microphone placement, headphones, and we'll have a couple of special tips for you at the end. So stay tuned, we'll be right with you. Alright, let's talk about types of microphones when we're recording. And basically there are two, the condenser mic and the dynamic mic. Now condenser mics are typically used in studios when recording vocals. They have a little bit of a cleaner sound, a little crisper sound, and they reproduce sound a little more accurately without color coloring, colorization of the, uh, of the sound. So they're typically used for vocals in a studio. Whereas dynamic microphones are used more for live performance and for recording instruments. And we're going to put some links to a few different kinds of microphones in the description below, so check those out. Uh, typical dynamic mics would be, um, you'll see them on stage used, for example, the Shure SM58 or the Sennheiser 835, which is the one that I use when I'm performing. Many different ones uh, for performing. Condenser mics, the one we use here in the studio is actually one that's been out for quite a while, and that's the Audio-Technica AT4033, and you'll see a link to that below too. So uh, price, price ranges, they're kind of all over the place, but again, we'll put a few links down there so you can check those different ones out. Now, talking about microphone placement, what we're talking about is how close to the microphone should you, as the singer, or uh, the singer be? Well, if you're recording the melody, or what we call the lead vocal, then probably five to six inches away from the microphone. You want that kind of a close sound. Um, using a pop filter, and we'll show you a couple links to one of those uh, down in the description below as well. The pop filter keeps those unwanted P sounds and B sounds and things like that from getting into the recording. Um, then, when you're doing background vocals or you want that, that choir sound, maybe you're recording a group of people all singing together, then the microphone might want to be three, four, five, even six feet away. And interestingly enough, you'll notice uh, as you do that, that the listener is able to perceive in the recording how far the singer or singers have, uh, have been from the microphone. Very interesting. And sometimes you want that choir effect of a, of a whole bunch of people singing. And uh, by putting the microphone a distance away from them, uh, that's what you're going to get. Um, Nate's going to talk about headphones in just a second, but one more thing I wanted to mention about, about microphones is that uh, using the pop filter uh, also helps you to keep the right distance from the microphone. You really don't want to get too close, and you don't want to be too far away, so that pop filter can help you. If you're right up against the pop filter, and that filter is three or four inches away, we're going to put some pictures in the, in the uh, description too. That, uh, so you can see a couple examples of how a pop filter is used and uh, different things like that. So Nate, when I, before I started recording, way back when, I used to see people in, in a studio, they'd see pictures or whatever on TV, and they always were singing with headphones on. Yeah. And I always wondered, why? Why do they have these headphones on? All they're doing is they're singing. Why? What are they, what's, what are they for? I think it's just because it looks cool. Look, so you look like a real rock star then. I could have sworn it was something else, but hey, you know, that that okay. No, <laughs> well. uh, seriously, there, you know, there is a technical reason for it. And the, the first one, obviously, is the, the vocalist is hearing the background track, um, the music that they're singing to. So you're wearing headphones as monitor reference to hear um, the song for your pitch, for your timing, for your tempo, and you're singing along with the, you know, the scratch track or even the finished track that your voice is going to be recorded to. Um, another thing that you might be listening to as you're singing is a click track. So this is something that the sound engineer is going to put in for you. It's like a metronome or even a rhythm track that's going to be giving you the downbeat. 
to make sure that your vocal is on time with the music that's recorded. That's very important for them to sync that up as they're mixing it in the end production. Um, and uh, again, talking about the engineer or the producer, especially if you're in a studio where you're in an isolated vocal booth or the engineer is in a separate room, your, your mon monitor headphones, this is the way that the engineer is going to be talking to you. So they might be giving you notes, giving you reference points, asking you to sing your part again, and that's going to be coming through your headphones. And only you're going to be hearing that. It's not going to get picked up by the microphone. So it's really um, for the vocalist to reference everything that the, uh, the, the sound engineer is working on. Um, you might have noticed on TV or, a, or in a video on YouTube or something where a vocalist might have one ear muff on and one off. Um, that's just kind of a matter of personal preference. And what that is is um, some people only want to hear what is on the recording, what the engineer is working on. So they're going to wear both um, headphones, both earmuffs on their ears and kind of isolate the, the room out so they, they can focus on what they're hearing. Um, for some people, they found that it's hard to reference their voice without hearing it naturally. So they're going to pull one um, earmuff off so that they can hear their voice in front of them but also reference the music. Um, that's kind of been my personal preference. I found I need to hear my voice to really to get the right pitch. Otherwise, I, I, I kind of get lost. It's kind of disorienting. But um, just work um, with that. Try both headphones on, both ear, you know, one earmuff off, and you'll find what works best for you. Um, the other thing, we talked a little bit about the sound engineer um, mixing your monitor for you. Um, some people like to have a little bit of reverb put on their voice um, in their headphone mix. Now, this isn't necessarily going on your final track. That's going to be done later in post-production, but um, we found from our experience some vocalists feel a little more comfortable singing their part if there's just a little bit of reverb. Right. And we're not sure why, but that it, it seems to help with the emotional aspect of it. Um, if it's just your flat, dry voice, some, some singers don't feel comfortable to, to really sing out. Um, so if you're feeling like you just can't get enough emotion in your voice, you can't get into the music, try just a little bit of reverb in, only in your monitor mix, and that might help. Um, the other side of that is, if you have a lot of reverb in there, you might have trouble with your pitch. You might just be off a little sharp, a little flat. So if you're having trouble with your pitch as you're singing, um, cut the reverb, just have a dry um, treatment of your voice, and you'll find that your pitch will probably be much more accurate. Um, now, talking about headphones, can you use just any old headphones, like maybe earbuds or something that comes with your stereo? Probably not. Um, those headphones, even if they're good quality, tend to have uh, what's called a bass boost, and that's going to muddy the sound of your voice. Um, you want to get nice studio quality um, headphones, and they're all different price range. We're going to put some links below to ones that we recommend for you guys. Yeah. But um, the technical term for those are flat response, so that's going to give you a much truer, much faithful, uh, much more faithful representation of your voice so that you make sure that you're singing clearly and um, on pitch for, for the recording. Now let's talk about some practical tips for, for vocal recording. Right. So um, one thing to, to think about, especially if you're going to a studio, most studios charge by, by the hour. So you want to make sure that you're practiced up. So in other words, know what you're going to sing before you get there. The, the last thing that you want to do is to get to the, to the studio and start recording your vocal and then th say, oh, wait, I need to do that again. Or, mm -hmm. It's OK to make mistakes and to retake, but just re remember that the meter is still running. Mm -hmm. So practice your vocals. Know exactly what you want to do, what you want to sing before you get there. And along with that is warming up. Warm up your voice, um, maybe on the way to the studio. In, in the, the car. In the car, right. yeah. <laughs> like right now, I would not want to record my vocals because I still have morning voice, even though we're recording this in the afternoon. <laughs> um, but warm up your voice, be practiced up, make sure that you know exactly what you want to do yeah. to get the most um, out of your time in the right. studio. Right. The other thing is to make sure that you're recording in a quiet environment um, with no background noise. Mm -hmm. Um, some of that is going to be done in the studio with either an isolated vocal booth. It could be a separate room, or they might just have um, a, a curtain or um, panels or something that are pulled across to make sure that they cut out any background noise um, 
from your vocal, and also that's a little, that's one of the reasons that we use headphones, right? That's right. Headphones want to uh, get, getting back to the headphones. Why we wear them when we're recording is because we don't want that music, the background music, to be in the on the vocal track. Yeah. We want to isolate the, your vocal from the background music. So you're hearing the music, but it's not being recorded in there. So that, that's a good, so, a good and reason. And that's yeah. one tip. Um, even though you have these headphones on, don't turn them up way you know too far. The, if you have a really good condenser mic for your vocals, um, and you turn the headphone mix up too loud, it's actually going to pick that up yeah, yeah. on the track. Yeah. Now, if it's real quiet, the engineer will be able to cover that up. But just keep that in mind. You only want to hear enough to reference um, the click track, the background music, and the engineer as, they, as they're talking to you. Yeah. Um, maybe one, one final um, tip is, even though you're warmed up and you're prepared and you're, you've practiced, you know what you're going to sing, be prepared to sing your part multiple times, mm -hmm. especially if you have a good producer. Um, it's not maybe that you made a mistake, but they know that you can do it better, or they might want you to try singing it in several different ways. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more, you know, in intensity here, or a little quieter here, or you know, whatever it is, the engineer is going to hear this, and they might have other ideas for you. So be prepared to sing the same part yeah. over and over again, multiple takes. Um, so make sure your voice is ready for that. Yeah. Or if they're recording at home, do the same thing. Don't yeah. don't, be, don't be happy with just one with just one take. Do it several times. I'm going to go back to the headphone thing again one sure. more time too. Yeah. If if you uh, if you're recording at home and you are going to use those headphones to mix your final mm. your final recording they want to be a nice flat response so you're not hearing a whole lot of bass and uh, cutting that bass out uh, we can get it if you got questions on that leave us a comment below uh, but the flat response headphones are, are uh, almost imperative for mm -hmm. for mixing yeah to get that mm -hmm. final mix we hope that these tips have helped you a little bit, my friends. Uh, maybe you've got a comment or a question. We'd love to hear about that. Maybe a favorite microphone that you like to use, favorite set of headphones, maybe some techniques that you have found that have really worked for you. Leave those comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And before we go, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Click the little bell so you're notified when new videos come out. In fact, we're coming up with one um, very soon on the mixing process, talking about how we do all the post-production, giving you some tips about how we do that here in the studio and maybe how you can do that at home as well. So subscribe, make sure you share it with your friends and keep coming back for even greater content. Until we see you again, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I'm Paul. And I'm Nate. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.